In this how-to video, I will show you how to calculate the risk for your project. We're going to be using the files from Chapter 11, the support files. We're going to be calculating the risk for the normal solution. And we're also going to see how to adjust the activity risk when required. And so here I have the system risk analysis file on the normal tab, and I have an empty placeholder table for calculating the risk. I'm going to harvest the values for it from Microsoft Project. And so the first thing you do is you open up the project file for your project, and might as well sort it by ID. Always know exactly what you're looking at and how you sort it. And I can see I have here the activity name and its total slack or its float. The only two values I really care about here, what I need for the template, is the IDs, the activity name, and its float. Now, there's no way of actually copying the activity IDs, so we're going to add that manually. I'm highlighting the entire column of the activity name. I hit Control and I highlight the total slack or the float column. And now I hit Copy. Go back to Excel, create a new Excel file, and paste these values in. As we've seen in other videos, MS Project in the paste add the string space days, and that makes it, instead of a number, it makes it um, into a string. We need to fix that. So I'm going to replace space days with an empty string. Now it's now all beautiful numbers. I'm also going to add activity IDs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click that little blue dot. And that makes Excel expand that format all the way until it finds an empty line. And now this is good enough to copy. Now, very important, when you're doing this calculation, you want to exclude activities of zero duration. In this case, we have our milestones, activities of zero duration, and so it's important not to copy those. Okay, and let me actually just copy it values only so the format is better. Okay, and so now the spreadsheet automatically calculates for you the risk value can security at 0.73, activity at 0.79. Here's how the spreadsheet calculates the various risk numbers. For criticality, the first thing you have to do is tell it what is the limits, what is red, what is yellow, what is green, and you do it based on these values. It's completely customizable. So obviously, 10 days of load could be uh, green on a three-month project, but it could be red on a one-year project. So this is somewhat project dependent. In addition, you have to give it the weight, what is green, what is red as far as the weight, and that's basically what you do in this section. The rest, the spreadsheet does for you. Here's the risk calculation. It classifies all the activities based on the limits and calculate the risk. There's also a sanity check here. The sanity check simply makes sure that the sum of all classification, I mean the sum of the green, yellow, red, and critical, equals the sum of activities in the project. It's a very simple sanity check. If I were to go and by mistake type 1 over here, watch what happened here to the sanity check. I'm going to go and type 1. And you can see the sanity check failed because I have a mistake here. And that's the criticality calculation. The activity calculation is just one formula that looks at the total float of all the activities. It's a very discrete formula. It looks at the contribution of individual activities, so we don't care about the weights and such and it just calculates it. And you can see it's fairly templatized, good to go for your projects. Now sometimes with activity risk, you have to adjust the floats. And writing software, we discussed the problem that sometimes very high floats skew the risk formula much higher, and it's, it's just an artifact of the formula. Uh, the activity risk model only works when the risks are uniformly spread across the entire range between the small, smallest float and the largest float. If you look at this particular project, most of the floats are in the 20 range, but then we have 85 and 85 here. That makes it an outlier. 
Lighting software shows how to adjust the outliers. And what we have here, we have an adjusted column here. What it does, it has the following formula. It examines the value to the left and compares it to the average of all floats plus one standard deviation. If the value here is indeed greater than the average plus one standard deviation, it replaces it with the average plus one standard deviation. And indeed, if you look at all these other cells, it didn't touch them except it identified these as being the outliers and it adjusted them. This is the adjusted float column. This formula checks to see the following. If there's no value to the left, it takes the original value, but if there is a value to the left, it will simply pick it up and not use the original value. The activity risk formula actually uses the adjusted column. It doesn't use the original uh, values. As a result, you can see it's 0.45 compared to 0.43, so it's fairly comparable. Let me show you what it would look like if I would not do the adjustment. I'm just going to move the floats on the original total float. You can see it jumped markedly higher to 0.62. So obviously, it's a good idea to adjust the floats here. For more on project and risk, see writing software.